Okay. Welcome, everybody. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jesse Bowser, and I'm the Director of Athletics and Recreation. I want to start by welcoming you all to the Rotunda in St. Joseph's Hall. As you can tell, the air conditioning is working very well tonight. So enjoy it. Enjoy it. It is my distinct pleasure to meet here in person as we've navigated the effects of the pandemic. Tonight, we'll be recognizing five exemplary graduates and three college staff members who have had a profound impact on the institution and its athletic program. Before we, begin, before we begin the program, I would like to introduce Father Bob Mulligan, oblate of St. Francis de Sales, and team chaplain for our men's lacrosse team to present the evening's invocation. Generous God, for many years you have poured out blessing upon blessing in the life of Chestnut Hill College. We thank you for the energy and joy of Alumni Weekend, for this spirit-filled gathering, and for these athletes whom we celebrate and honor this evening. Bless Chestnut Hill College, we pray, loving God, in our academic rigor, in our athletic competition, in our care for the dear neighbor, and in our spiritual striving to be your sons and daughters that you call us to be. Remind us that all we have accomplished and all we will accomplish is for your honor and glory. Bless as well, we pray to, together our time tonight and the memories that we share. And we lift up these prayers in your name. We say together, amen. Thank you, Father. Before we commence, I would like to give special thanks to the Hall of Fame committee members. Jessica Day, who is not able to be here with us tonight, Sarah Machinsky, Bob Spratt, Bob Heller, and Phyllis Jablonowski. Their hard work and commitment to hosting a first class event is evident in all the details that we are seeing this evening. To the Vice President for Institutional Advancement, Aaron Woolley, and your team, including Teresa Bielski, Michelle Presnell, and Marie McLaughlin, Thank you for all your efforts to make this evening possible. Thank you to Chartwells, our dining services team led by Jean Blum, Desiree Johnson, and Karen Johnson. Once again, you've outdone yourselves and I'm so appreciative of the care that you put into our food. Thank you to Don Vischer and Greg Gorski for give, and Matus Sebatul for giving us the ability to stream this great evening for our loved ones who are unable to attend in person. I also want to take a second to thank Dr. Lynn Ortali, Vice President for Student Life, for your guidance and care as I transition to becoming the Director of Athletics. And I would be remiss to not acknowledge and thank my mentor, the woman who taught me everything I know about being a leader in this field, Lynn Tubman. It is an honor to have you here tonight as you witness some great athletes of your tenure become etched into the history books here at Chestnut Hill College. I can't find you. Where are you, Lynn? So without further ado, it's my pleasure to introduce Maddie Ta Madison Taylor and Maddie Jimenez, women's soccer players in the class of 2022, to acknowledge our former coach and dear friend, Sandy Dixon. Maddie and Maddie? Hello, my name is Madison Taylor and this is Madeline Jimenez. We would first like to begin by saying thank you and that we are honored to have the opportunity to speak about Coach Sandy Dixon. We are deeply appreciate, appreciate how much the athletics department has done to keep her legacy alive. Lauren, congratulations on your induction into Chestnut Hills College Hall of Fame tonight. It is only fitting that you and all the other women soccer players here tonight have this moment to share as we honor our forever coach, Sandy Dixon. As a senior in high school, I can vaguely remember visiting other colleges and talking to coaches, but the day that I met Sandy is something that I will never forget. Sandy was cheerful and encouraging about the program and my potential future at Chestnut Hill. Not knowing what to expect, I was entering my first year of college, I was nervous, but right from the start, she made all of us feel at home. There was not a time that she was not cracking jokes and making us all laugh, even if it was during the worst times of beep tests and mile runs. 
I can confidently say that my first season being coached by Sandy Dixon will be what I remember when I look back on college soccer. She brought us together not only as a team, but as a family. She pushed us to, be, to form bonds that will last a lifetime. We all looked up to Sandy and we could depend on her no matter what. We know how much she loved us and loved this program. Even when she was sick, nothing would stop her from watching our games and staying connected during the 2019 season. I will forever be grateful that I can say I was coached by Sandy Dixon and was touched by her love for the sport. When Madison and I were asked to write this speech for Sandy's recognition at the Hall of Fame, we recalled all the wonderful things that she did at Chestnut Hill. As the first director of fitness and recreation, she was able to lay the groundwork for getting our student body, as well as our student athletes, in good health. It is quite amazing to think about the fact that she produced 13 NSCAA All-Americans. Aside from all these accolades, <clears throat> one thing stood out about Sandy Dixon, and that was her strength. Sandy taught us all what it meant to never give up. From the time I stepped onto the field in September of my freshman year until I learned of her passing, I never saw Sandy stop fighting. She proved what it means to be an athlete. She fought through the sweat, blood, and the tears. She never let her team down as she watched every game we played from her hospital bed. She was constantly texting our assistant coach, Steph Liddy, with formation changes, strategies, and game plans. We felt her love and strength throughout the entirety of our 2019 season. We played Sandy Strong because she fought Sandy Strong. I was honored to be named a captain by her for the 2019 season. Due to her diagnosis, she was unable to watch me fulfill that role, but continued to give me the courage to be a strong leader just as she would have done. Last month at the Griffin Athletic Awards, Sandy's legacy was cemented in the athletic department when one of the awards was given to the female and male student athlete who showed extraordinary dedication to their health. The Sandy Dixon Fitness Award is proof of her success as a coach, a woman, and an athlete. Every year, her name and memory will be restored as student athletes accept an honor with Sandy's name on it. We could not be prouder to be part of the last class that Sandy was able to coach and instill in her values. While Sandy always hated the spotlight, I know tonight she's looking down on us all and is grateful to be honored by everyone who loved her. We are grateful to have known Sandy, to have been loved by Sandy, and will always be her little chickens. Thank you all for being here tonight. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, ladies. I'm not crying, you're crying. It's a great heartfelt tribute to Sandy, and I really appreciate you ladies for taking the time to write that in, in her memory, so thank you. Now I'd like to, for you all to please join me in welcoming Jack McGinley, class of 2012, to introduce tonight's first inductee, Jesse Daywalt. Jack? You want to hold it or do you want to go in here? You can put it there. Hello everyone, my name is Jack McGinley. Um, I'm here tonight to introduce Jesse Daywalt into the Chestnut Hill Athletics Hall of Fame. Jesse was my teammate, he was my roommate, he was one of my groomsmen, um, and most importantly, he was my realtor. Phenomenal. <laughs> he's a really great realtor, so if you're looking to buy or sell property, he's got cards. Um, <laughs> but thank you, Jesse, for giving me this honor. Um, I guess I was your last choice and no one else would do it. Um, <laughs> So I wasn't really sure where to start with all this. Um, I've never inducted anyone to a Hall of Fame, but uh, here I am. So I figured I'd start with why I'm inducting you and you're not inducting me. <laughs> the first reason is Jesse's ambition. From the first day I met Jesse, I could tell he had very, very big goals. He either wanted to go to the, one of the top law schools in the country, become a real estate tycoon with his mother, or maybe even president if no one else was gonna do it. <laughs> Um, as soon as he hit campus, he wasted no time. He was one of the top students in our class immediately, and every teacher loved Jesse. As for me, I just really wanted to marry Rich and retire early. <laughs> My wife's here. Uh, she knows that. We're getting there. Um, <laughs> second is his unmatched intensity and his inability to back down from any challenge ever. Whether that challenge comes from the opposing team or even sometimes his own teammates. Um, as a pitcher, which I was in college, there's nothing more than I ever wanted to do than strike out my own teammate. 
my, my own teammate, and especially my own roommate. I quickly learned that on our first inter-squad scrimmage that striking out Jesse was next to impossible. No matter how many times or how many great pitches I would throw to him, he would simply just foul them off. And it often felt like we were there for 20 minutes. And, you know, I just really didn't feel like doing it anymore. So I'd either just walk him or just throw a fastball right down the middle. Even in summer league, like, I would just be like, you know what, I'm not going to waste my time. I want to go home at a reasonable hour. Here you go, Jesse. Just hit it. I don't care. Let's move on. I get it. You want it more than I do. <laughs> the third trait is the most important trait. Um, there is no player that Coach Spratt loves more than Jesse. <laughs> it's especially crazy when you think his own son has even played at this program. <laughs> <laughs> There's no doubt in my mind that if you go down to Coach Spratt's office, which I was actually just in, you will find several posters of Jesse, autographed baseballs, and maybe even a game-worn jersey. I can confirm all that stuff is down there. Coach Spratt loves Jesse. As for me, on my senior day, in front of everyone, this is a direct quote from Coach Spratt. Usually you say something nice, right, about your seniors graduating. He said, Jack, there is no bigger pain in the ass that I've ever coached than you. <laughs> my mother was so mad at me. <laughs> but despite our differences, Jesse, myself, and six others share a very deep, deep bond. We are all a part of the second ever class to be recruited and graduate at Chestnut Hills men's baseball team. This may not seem like anything special, but I can assure you Coach Spratt made this as difficult as humanly possible. When Jesse and I were freshmen, there was about 20 to 25 of us recruited to play at Chestnut Hill. You'll notice I said only eight graduated. Um, our first year on campus was, was one of the most physically and mentally challenging years of my life. There was countless Chestnut Hill miles, tough man challenges, and house runs. I felt like I was on the track team more than I, I was on a baseball team. I feel like I never really even touched the baseball sometimes. I would often think to myself, why did I agree to do this for like free? Um, and then I would think back to being a senior in high school and trying to decide where I wanted to go to play baseball. I, would go to, I went to several other schools, and I would have a traditional visit with the coaches. They would show me their baseball field, the weight room, um, how many championships there were. I would meet with current players um, and, other, and, other school, and their alumni, and they would all talk about how great their program was and how established it was. Then I met Coach Spratt, and he literally had none of these things. <laughs> the only thing I knew about Chestnut Hill was that they had nuns. It had been an all-girls school until about like two years before I was about to come here. And my friend Chris Santoro's older brother DJ had transferred there to play baseball. That was literally all I knew. But when I talked to Coach Brad about coming to Chestnut Hill, he told me, he wanted, he told me what he wanted in players. He wanted players who were com as competitive as he was. And if you don't know Coach Brad, that's like a super big ask and crazy. Um, he wanted players who were selfless. And most importantly, he wanted players who, take, who would take pride in their program. He promised me that Chestnut Hill would offer me something that no other school could, a chance to build a baseball program from the ground up and model it in my own way. When I think back about that, I always think I was a good fit um, as a Chestnut Hill baseball player. I really hate losing. I really don't like being the center of attention at all. I'm only doing this because I really like Jesse. And I love the baseball team here. Both Jesse and I, after we graduated, we came back and coached. Um, we always text Coach Brad to see how the team's doing. And I always thought the six other people I graduated with really fit this description well. But as I was writing this speech out, I realized that Jesse really perfectly represents all of these things. And let me explain why. Meeting your college roommate freshman year can be one of the most anxious things in the world. I'm sure some of you in this crowd have horror stories, but not me, I was lucky. I can honestly say in all the years that we lived together, Jesse really never got in my nerves and we really never really argued about anything except when we would play video games against each other and play ping pong. It unlocked our competitive side, which carried over right to the baseball field. When I talked to my friends at other schools, they would ask me how things were going and who my roommate was. I would tell them it was Jesse, and the reply I always got was, oh, that really angry guy at second base? And I was like, yeah, that's him. Um, but Jesse wasn't necessarily like angry. He was just determined to prove a point. And that point was that everyone else was wrong. Um, if you went to a high school baseball showcase and you watched Jesse compete, you'd probably just shrug your shoulders and say, eh, no big deal, this is just another guy. Many other college coaches did the same. Jesse doesn't run super fast, he doesn't throw a ball really all that hard, and he really doesn't hit the ball all that far. I think he had like one home run in college. 
So he was really overlooked. But the thing that most people really missed about Jesse is he's just really, really good at baseball. And every time he stepped on that field, he really just wanted to prove that point. But my favorite thing of all about Jesse is that despite all the awards he won and everything he achieved on the baseball field, if you met him, he would never mention any of these things, ever. When Coach Fratt would announce to the team that Jesse had yet again won another award or was another all-state team, all-region team, I could tell that he was happy with his achievements, but he really didn't care that all that much. Um, Jesse has always gotten more enjoyment out of his friend's success. I remember um, the first ever inning I pitched in college. Um, I was lucky enough to come in and strike out the side, and I remember this special moment of me walking off the field, looking at my dad, and thinking, wow, like, we really, this is like what I've worked my whole life for. And then out of nowhere, I got this giant bear hug, and this dude just going nuts, and it was Jesse, and it was the coolest thing, because I've literally never seen him happy on a baseball field. But for that moment, he was super happy. So even after college, um, there's no one ever more happy for my success than Jesse, whether it's getting married, um, getting promoted at work, or celebrating the birth of our children, Jesse was always my biggest cheerleader. So in closing, I know you don't like to celebrate yourself a lot, Jesse, and I know you're always trying to achieve more than you did yesterday, but take tonight to relax, sit back, and enjoy yourself. You achieved so much on the baseball field and off it. Just take some time and appreciate it. There's no one who deserves this honor more. Um, you earned it, so enjoy it. I will keep this short. Um, thank you, Jack. That was very nice. I appreciate it. I am angry. I, I am angry. <laughs> um, but I am honored to be here tonight. Um, between my four years of playing and six years of coaching, I learned many lessons that I use on a daily basis. I still use today. And in a lot of ways, Chestnut Hill College shaped the person that I am today. There are a lot of people to thank, and I'm sure I'll miss some. Uh, so I'll start by thanking my parents, uh, Jennifer Daywalt and John Daywalt, somewhere in here. Um, they're the reason I started playing baseball originally, and they always supported me academically and, and athletically. Uh, they came to all my games. They sat in snow, rain, and the brutal heat. So thank you guys for always supporting me. Next, I'd like to thank my wife, Leah. Leah uh, Daywalt right over there. Uh, we started dating my sophomore year of college. And she was the one who had to put up with me working a full-time job and coaching at Chestnut Hill, which is also a full-time job if you know Coach Spratt. Um, so I wouldn't have been able to do that without your support, so thank you. I'd also like to thank my teammates. Uh, too many of them to list, um, but a few I'd like to mention are obviously Jack, my roommate, uh, another one, John Flack, DJ Santoro, and Mike Knipe. Um, I was closest with those guys, and they made my time here at Chestnut Hill that much more special. Uh, many assistant coaches that I, I could thank also, most notably Coach Torsani, Coach Burke, Coach Lockman, and Coach Roth. Uh, and finally, I'd like to thank Coach Bob Spratt. Um, he gave me an opportunity to play baseball for four extra years, and he created an environment that allowed me to thrive as a player. I learned a lifetime's worth of lessons from him in 10 years, and it would take me a long time to highlight all of those lessons. Uh, so I'll just mention the number one lesson that stuck with me, which was accountability. Hold your teammates accountable, and more importantly, hold yourself accountable. So thank you, Coach Spratt. Once again, I'm honored to be here. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Jack. And thank you, and congratulations, Jesse. Next, please join me in welcoming Mary Veach Robinson, class of 2012, to introduce our next inductee, Lauren Riff Larkin. Come on up, man. Yes. <laughs> All right, let me scroll up here. Okay. Good evening. Uh, my name is Mary. I am one of Lauren's teammates. Our teammate Shannon was supposed to speak tonight, but she just had a baby less than a week ago, so I have the honor of being Lauren's backup choice. <laughs> um, 
In reality, I know any one of our teammates would have been honored to get up here and give this award to Riff, but I also know we all wish it was our late coach Sandy um, standing here. Sandy knew Riff would be accepting this award one day and so looked forward to standing up here and giving it to her. She talked about how fun it would be get, having a little reunion years later and going out for drinks at Brittingham's afterwards. What we wouldn't give to be able to experience one more speech and beer with Sandy. So in honor of Sandy, I ask that we have a moment of silence and those of you that were lucky enough to have known her, take this moment to remember the laughs you shared with her. Thank you. <clears throat> so I had some things in mind to say, but I reached out to our teammates to help beef up my speech a little bit. I'll read a few clips of their replies tonight and save some of the other clips for when there aren't any nuns within earshot. <laughs> Brittany said, Riff was a great leader on and off the soccer field. Her heart and determination were unmatched and her skill level was top notch. Speaking of top notch, so was her signature bun, <laughs> which never seemed to move despite her dribbling through half the opposing team to score. Kyleen said, I would not be the person I am now without having you as a captain and playing beside you. Thank you for always staying on me. Steph Liddy said, I feel like it's rare to have a teammate that is an exceptional leader and extraordinary player, but, but Lauren Riff was able to be both. All her teammates felt lucky to share the field with her because we knew each day Riff would bring her best. Her efforts pushed others to work to their greatest potential. Mel said, to come across a player who is highly skilled, humble, and a leader is nearly impossible, let alone being able to play alongside one. Riff was the player everyone was scared to compete against, especially when she had the ball at her feet or took a shot at net. We, all, we are all super grateful to have had the experience to play with Lauren and have her as our captain. LB said, Lauren was a gifted soccer player with natural talent, but what made her great was her passion, enthusiasm, and ability to lead. Lauren had a way of making you want to play harder, run faster, and be better. Even when she wasn't on the field, you could feel her presence. So, do we see a trend here? Riff led by example. It wasn't the pep talks before the game or at halftime. It was seeing her play her heart out on the field. That's what inspired each of us to play our hearts out. Shannon Katz subbed it up best though. The motivation Riff played with was absolutely contagious. I'll finish up with uh, one part of Julie's seven part answer. The other six will be saved for after the speech as I mentioned before. She said, looking back, it was really awesome to be able to watch you play, and we all knew it was something special. To see you play become an all- Why did you have to cry? Now I'm gonna cry. <laughs> <laughs> to see you play, become an All-American, stand beside you getting married, and watch you become a mom has been such a joy as your friend. That was Julie's answer, but I'm still crying. <laughs> okay. As a new mom myself, I know holding on to who you were before you became a mom can be challenging. We all know what a big role soccer has played in your life. And now you have a little baby boy that's gonna make it hard to remember your life before he came around. But you've got a team's worth of people <laughs> who are never gonna let you forget that you finished your soccer career with 56 goals, 14 game-winning goals, 18 assists, that you were a two-time CAC Player of the Year, the first Chestnut Hill College All-American athlete, and now you're in the Hall of Fame. So. Can you tell we all just became moms? We're all just crying. We all just became our mothers. Um, I had no idea I was gonna have to give a speech. Thanks for that, Jess. Um, but I just wanted to honestly thank my parents for never missing a game. I think the one game you missed, we got in a brawl. Sorry, Lynn Tubman, Lauren Brown. Um, 
and my brother, he's somewhere. Oh, couldn't miss them at the game. They always tell me how good or bad I played, greatly appreciated. Um, but Chestnut Hill is definitely one of the best places on earth. Met some of my best friends, my husband, and I'm gonna cry if I stand up here any longer. Um, but I just greatly appreciate this place, so thank you. Thank you, Mary, and congratulations, Lauren. And it's now my pleasure to introduce our very own men's head lacrosse coach and two-time CAC champion head coach, Mike Terranova, to introduce tonight the third inductee, Mike Melnichenko. If everyone would start by lowering their expectations for this speech, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks. So it's my pleasure to tell you a little bit about Mike that you will not find in your programs. In addition to all of the incredible things that he did and accomplished while in a Griffin's uniform, I'd like to start out by sharing with you four truths and a lie. Mike has an addiction to Diet Coke. Mike was a semi-pro League of Legends player. Mike can hit a golf ball further than you. Mike never scored a behind-the-back goal in his CHC career. And Mike shows affection to his best friends by gently kissing them on the nose. <laughs> Actually, those five things might all be true. You'll have to ask Mike after this. <laughs> First time I met Mike was in the spring of 2010, and he and his dad, Boris, drove down from Ontario to visit campus. Uh, coach Carrington, our first coach, had escorted them to my office upon their arrival. And thank God that Mike was not a book that you could judge by its cover. <laughs> I can only describe his haircut as something that resembled a hedgehog sitting on his head, a prominent pot belly, and massively swollen cheeks, which we found out later were from having just had oral surgery. So there was a good explanation for that. And to top it off, he was wearing jorts. shorts. That may be a little bit of revisionist history. I could be just adding the jorts in, but you get the picture. Later that evening, after our team had finished practice, a super secret, double secret probation type workout took place after practice with a couple of our partial qualifiers. And Mike, sorry Denise, As soon as his shoulder pads went on, it was clear he would make our team better. However, I will test to this day that neither Coach Carrington nor I realized how prolific a player he would become. Another thing that's important about Mike is he makes people smile. Sometimes it's because of his positive positivity or goofy energy, and sometimes it is because of how differently or awkwardly he reacts to situations than the rest of us one memory that comes to mind. In August of 2010, just a couple weeks before he was supposed to move in to Chestnut Hill, I became the interim head coach rather unexpectedly. These were times before GroupMe or Twitter, etc. So I made time to call and connect with each player. Of those 40-ish calls that I made 12 years ago, Mike's is the only one that I remember any specific word of. And I don't recall what I said. I probably explained, you know, Coach Carrington had resigned, um, reiterated CHC's commitment to being a strong lacrosse program, that fall training would not skip a beat while we searched for a new head coach. But when I asked Mike if he had any questions, concerns, it seemed that he was completely unaffected by the news that the coach that had recruited him had just resigned. As if nothing had happened, he simply responded with, okay, is anyone wearing number 27? <laughs> One 
One of Mike's lasting impressions on me is that he's the only player I have coached that not once in their career missed a practice or a game, not once for injury or otherwise. His combination of talent and dedication made him the most decorated player in our young program's history, and more importantly, earned him the trust and respect of his teammates. Furthermore, his humor, his candor, and his competitive edge made him a beloved friend and teammate. I'm honored to introduce the first men's lacrosse Hall of Fame ductee, Michael Malnichenko. I tried to print this off at Logue Library, but I didn't have any change, so they didn't let me. Uh, thank you, Coach, for the words. I don't know if they were kind, but I appreciate them. Uh, first, I want to start. Congratulations to all my fellow inductees. We're joining a short list of Chestnut Hill College greats, uh, like Betty Buckley, an instrumental figure who helped pave the way for the future of Chestnut Hill athletics and the dominant women's archery team of the 50s with names like Dolores Bullseye Dillon and Margaret Robin Hood Fleming, figures of Chestnut Hill history that were made of stuff of legends. We did it, so congratulations to each and every one of us. Uh, I want to thank Chestnut Hill College itself for the uh, opportunity to play the game I love. Sister Carol, thank you for everything. Uh, the coaching staff for believing in me. One in particular who really showed me my potential and fought hard for me. Uh, so thank you, Coach Carrington, <laughs> for the big scholarship. Uh, for those who don't know, he left like four days before I got here, so thank you. Um, I need to thank my teammates. Chess Hill Men's Lacrosse had a very close team, uh, arguably way too close um, <laughs> on many occasions. Uh, I wasn't bullied too bad for being a foreigner in this country. Just made fun of the way I talk, my clothes, my dance moves. Uh, I've had worse though, so thank you guys for the best four years of my life. I appreciate it. Um, I need to thank some of my roommates in particular, uh, Nick Johnson, Chris Schaefer, and Joe Caramonte for putting up with me for three years, uh, chauffeuring me around. Couple incidents, uh, almost at the house on fire, and I fell through a wall, so thank you guys for putting up with me. We survived though. Uh, I could go on and on about how much everyone on the team means to me, but uh, I was told to keep this speech to a few minutes. So to the boys of Chestnut Hill College, Men's Lacrosse, I miss everyone very much. Um, I've been unable to come down because of the whole COVID thing, but I uh, missed a couple of weddings and events, but I'll be back. Um, I need to thank the parents of the players as well. Um, every holiday, I had tons of dozens of offers to stay at their place. I needed a place to stay the tailgates after the game, regardless if we home or away or if we won or lost. Uh, they had hot food and everything for us, so I really appreciate that. I'll keep these parents anonymous, but thank you for the beer you gave us after the game. <laughs> um, and finally, to thank my parents. Uh, my mom couldn't make it here today, but big thank you to Boris. Uh, the commitment and sacrifices you made helped me get to where I am today. Uh, the early morning practices, the games, everything, six hour drives. So thank you, dad. I really appreciate everything you did for me. I don't say it enough, but I love you. Uh, other than that, thank you. I appreciate it. Do you want to just be the MC the rest of the night? Because I thoroughly enjoyed that. And also want to mention that Lynn Tubman, my mentor, was the AD at the time that all that stuff was going on. That <laughs> doesn't go on now anymore. We're on a tight ship, tight ship around here. Thanks for pointing that out, Mike. Appreciate that. And congratulations. So now, please join me in welcoming our former head tennis coach and associate athletic director, Albert Strobel, to introduce our fourth inductee, Kelly Dennis. Please. Do not take these beautiful babies away. I don't care if they run around, laugh, cry, whatever. Let them stay, please, so they can watch her mom and hear how great she was. And he is definitely going to cry. <laughs> you got the tissues. Told you. <laughs> Thanks, Don Vischer, for setting this uh, spotlight on my head. Should show the glare pretty soon. 
Good evening, everyone. I'm truly honored to be here tonight to talk about Kelly Dennis. When I first took the job at Chestnut Hill College, uh, Chestnut Hill was uh, transitioning from Division Three to Division Two. If any of you here, when we were Division Three, our tennis program was not the most competitive. Great bunch of girls, but just were not ready for Division Two. So I knew I had a huge leap in front of me to try to recruit the right type of athlete. When I looked at the type of athlete I wanted to bring into Chestnut Hill College, it was the right fit. Um, when, I, when I met Kelly Dennis and I started talking to her, um, I knew I had the perfect fit. Uh, she was the best fit I could have tennis-wise, academically, and socially. With her, I feel like I hit the trifecta. And I say trifecta because Kelly and her family are always Kentucky Derby always dressed up, so I've always noticed these things as, as I've gone on. But when I recruited Kelly Dennis, I feel like I not only got her, but I got the entire family. Uh, her dad would routinely come in for golf outings. Her parents were always active, driving nine to 10 hours to matches, tournaments. Tried to get her sister, but she went to this place called Xavier. I guess a lot of kids from Cincinnati go to, go to Xavier. As a player, Kelly was one of the all-time leaders in statistics in tennis. According to my calculations, and I confirmed this in the program, she has 139 total wins between doubles and singles. For those that are not tennis players, that's a lot. Uh, she was selected to all conference, all academic, all regional teams. She was also our co-captain for, I believe, three years. It might have been two, but I think it was three. Um, and against most of the tougher teams that we played, it always seemed to be that the last match came down to Kelly Dennis. And uh, she didn't win them all, but she won most of them, and I can tell you, if there was one player I could choose to be on the court, it would be Kelly. Kelly always would play her opponent to the, to the max. She would never give up, no matter what the score was, no matter who the, who the opponent was, she would always fight to the end. As a student, she was on numerous all-academic teams at Chestnut Hill and in the CACC, but more importantly, she was a true leader on campus. Kelly's very recognized for her involvement with uh, Unify for Unifat, Campus Ministry, SAC, and a lot of other clubs I probably had no idea that she was involved in. One of my most proudest moments of Kelly did not come on the tennis court. It was during her senior year when she was selected as a finalist for the John Wooden Citizenship Award in Atlanta. We had a great time down there. This award is presented annually to collegiate and professional athletes who stand as outstanding role models. It is because of Kelly that I got to meet Drew Brees in person, and I did confirm he is 5'10", not six foot, as said on the website. Volunteering and being a role model are nothing new to Kelly. She would constantly come to me with community service activities that the team could participate in, and she actually, her and Danielle actually even uh, 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 coordinated our team to go to a local school with our assistant coach Andrew to help out with some of the kids there who didn't have a lot of great role models. So um, in closing, I think you can agree that Kelly Dennis personifies what it means to be a student athlete at Chestnut Hill and in Division II. Kelly, congrats on your induction tonight. I um, first want to thank uh, a lot of people to thank, but I think Chestnut Hill because they really let me be everything that I wanted to be, as Coach mentioned. You know, I got to be the philanthropist, um, academics, and the athlete, and so I just feel so blessed to have found such a place, perfect place that I could be the trifecta. Thanks, Coach, for that compliment. Um, and uh, also want to thank my parents. Um, you know, I, I think in, in that Athletes for a Better World speech um, that Drew Brees got to quote me, I'll just say that. Um, <laughs> um, you know, they, they never said uh, no to an opportunity for me. It was always, um, you know, something new that I could try, and they, and they always said yes. So just want to thank my parents for, um, you know, always, always saying yes to those amazing things that I got to do. So. Um, I uh, want to, again, say thanks to Chess and Hill, you know, met my amazing husband. We have three beautiful kids here um, and, and just such a special place. Special thanks to Coach Strobel, who, um, you know, yeah. I, I think yeah. those lessons that um, we applied on the court have, have applied off the court, especially in raising kids and the patience, determination, accountability, um, all of those things. So um, thank you, Coach, for all that. And lastly, thank all my teammates especially Danielle, those co-captain years, and, and just really a role model to, to know. Um. 
<laughs> great role model uh, to exemplify <laughs> continuing to be a captain. So, um, yeah, it's it's been a great ride. So thank you. <laughs> I did some fact checking. That amazing husband of Kelly's was one of my former players. Amazing, a little bit of an overstatement. Good man though, good man. Congratulations, Kelly. And just one quick side comment. I just want to acknowledge the fact that this place is very special and the fact that babies can come and walk all around and, and I want them to feel comfortable. That, that's what Chestnut Hill College is. So. Neat little thing that happens right now that was very innocent and awesome. So, thank you. I know what I'm saying, but I'm going to move my page anyway. And thanks a lot, Albert, and thanks for not crying and sweating all over the microphone. <laughs> and for the last inductee of the night, I'd like to introduce Frank DeMichael, a semi-pro semi baseball player and former player, a former teammate of mine, who is going to introduce our last inductee, Dom Rea. Are you a pro? I played in the big leagues for a little while. Oh. I'd like to introduce a former big league pitcher, you Frank DeMichael. I, I was an amateur, he was a pro, and that's a fact. I, I, I apologize, Frank. Thank you, I just want to make it clear. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, tonight I see a lot of people had speeches. I'm from South Philly. I wasn't an English major, so I'm just going to hit you with the forget about it, yo, cuz, whatever. 2012, uh, me and Dom started the room at Chestnut Hill. I played with him for four years. Um, that's just a joke. I actually was his trainer, uh, pitching instructor. And, uh, I met Dom when he was going into eighth grade, uh, eighth grade going into his uh, freshman year at camp. And uh, this is when I first started doing as a business, uh, being a trainer, specifically for throwing and, and pitching. And I remember Dom coming in with his dad, and I knew his dad, I knew his name from baseball, uh, being around in South Philadelphia, everybody knows everybody. Um, and I remember I usually film the guy first, so I'm filming Dom, and I'm saying things to him, and I remember he always had a smirk on his face. And I'm old school. Is this kid being a little sarcastic? Is this kid being cocky? So I'm watching him, and he kept on smirking. So the next week comes, we're going over his video, and he's got this little smirk. So Dom, his father, goes, yeah, John Marzano, let him rest in peace, used to call him Smiley, remember? And from that day on, I kind of like said, oh, this kid's just a happy kid. Well, let me tell you, this is one of the best human beings I've ever been around. And he shouldn't only be a Hall of Fame pitcher, he should be a Hall of Fame player. I'm ready to cry. One of my greatest kids I ever trained. And his parents are Hall of Famers as well. And I gotta give that to them. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be like this, but when he asked me to do this, this is the first time it ever happened to me. Man, that's what it's all about, being a trainer. I love this kid. He's just a great human being. And when I see his stats and the things he did, he became a better pitcher than me, and I pitched a little bit in the big leagues. But I was a thrower. He became a pitcher. And I told his dad one day, I said, he's a better pitcher than me. And he's like, get out of here. You went to the big leagues. I said, yeah, but I threw. He could pitch. And when I watched him pitch, I went to a few games, and I couldn't get to a lot of games because when I coach, it's a lot of after-school stuff, and they're playing their games. But I went to a few games, and I'm seeing Dom throw 3-1 change-ups, 2-1 curveballs, spotting his fastball behind him. And I'm like, this kid knows how to pitch. And a lot of times the parent will say, Frank, thank you so much for you helped him out so much. And I always say, it's not me. He's the one who had to perform. You know, I could just try to help him and guide him from my knowledge and experience. And this guy, just, just a great kid. And if you don't know his parents, they're, that's why he's like he is. They're just Hall of Fame people. Uh, 
couple quick, maybe funny stories so I could get out of crying. Um, when I train, some of the things I like to use a lot of analogies, and some are crazier than others, but I'm trying to get the kid to feel something that I'm saying. So Dom, being from South Philly, and I'm I born and raised in South Philadelphia, I said, Dom, it's like throwing a punch. He goes, I never got in a fight. <laughs> I said, you're from South Philly? I said, you never fought your mother? You never fight your father? You never got a fight with a relative? I mean, I fought my grandmother every week. It was like, and she was like Mike Tyson, let me tell you. So when I looked at it, I'm like, you never threw a punch. And he's like, I never throw a punch. That just goes to show you how like his parents raised him and how good of a kid he was. So that was just one of the things that like, as I got to know him and just how genuine of a person he was, you just can't not love the kid. Um, getting to another story, this is, yeah, I go and see him pitch his senior year. And it was senior day. And I mean, Dom's just like having a tremendous, I mean, he had great, his stats, when I look at them, all-time leader in wins, 25, 252 strikeouts, 42 starts, innings pitched, 274, complete games, seven, shutouts, three, balk pickoffs, eight. And why I say balk pickoffs, because nobody knew he used to balk when he used to pick off, because he used to move his front leg a little bit, but nobody ever picked him up. That's how good he was at it. Um, so his senior day, I happened to go to last year. It's a beautiful sunny day. His mom and dad are there. They're having a great time. Well, it's in the eighth inning, and uh, he's got a no-hitter. I know it. I don't know how many other people know it, but if you ever played baseball, you can't say it. Well, his uncle, who I used to play baseball with back in the day, who was a pitcher too, runs up to me and goes, hey, Frank, he's got a no-hitter. I said, Willie, are you crazy? The next pitch, base hit. He runs over me from the crowd. He's like, please don't tell my brother. He'll kill me. <laughs> so I didn't think they knew. And I said, I'm letting you out of the house. I'm letting you out of the box tonight. So uh, after that, when he was saying that, he's like, please don't tell my brother-in-law he's going to kill uh, My brother's going to kill me. I just had my keys. I said, I hope you can wash a car for a long time because I'm going to hold that in for many years. But um, it's with great honor when Dom asked me to uh, induct him tonight that he's a Hall of Fame pitcher but he's also a Hall of Fame human being. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Dominic Ray. Picture. That picture? <laughs> Thanks, buddy. How about this here? Yeah. All right, so um, it's truly an honor to be inducted into Chestnut Hill College's Hall of Fame. There's so many people I need to thank, including Bobby Santor. He couldn't be here tonight, but he was my uh, youth coach. Um, Art Cratchman, he's here. He's my high school coach. Torsani, he's the one who actually recruited me to come here. And no one mentioned her, but Nikki Lockhart, she made sure I passed my classes to stay here, <laughs> unfortunately. So I got to thank her. <laughs> True. Um, I'd like to thank my teammates. This game is definitely a team effort. And I would not be standing up here tonight if it wasn't for you guys making the plays behind me uh, day in and day out. Even if you did make an error or two behind me, it's all right. <laughs> um, I'd like to thank my assistant coaches I had throughout my career. Coach Spratt, when I came for my recruiting visit, you were up front and honest with me from the start. Thank you for believing in me from day one and pushing me to get the best out of me. Frank, where do we begin? You took me under your wing when I was in eighth grade, and I couldn't throw a strike to save my life. By the end, you were calling me after starts and telling me I needed to throw more balls. The endless number of hours we went through together throughout my nine years of lessons, from bullpens in the bocce court, which is a true story, to his backyard, I cannot thank you enough for making me the pitcher I became. Lastly, I'd like to thank my parents. Without them, none of this could have been possible. The amount of money and countless hours you put into this journey, I cannot thank you enough. From early mornings to those late nights, you both were there every step of the way and you actually beat us to our games. You were welcoming Big Griff to the games. <laughs> Correct. Um, so the four years I spent in Chestnut Hill gave me some of the best stories and memories that I, I never get sick of telling anyone that is willing to listen. Thank you to everyone I named and even the ones I forgot. You all made my career one to remember. Thank you, big leaguer Frank. 
It wouldn't be a Chestnut Hill Jesse Bowser event if I didn't mess one thing up. Kelly, you have Dom's, and he has yours. We can, we can do the switcheroo a little later. Uh, yeah. All right. Just have to keep everybody on their toes. Make sure they're reading what I'm giving them. Good job, Dom. <laughs> it, it has been an honor, really, to watch all five of the inductees today. I personally watched everyone's full careers here and can't say enough about these people as players and people. Lauren, amazing, amazing soccer player. I remember bringing my kids up to victory to watch you play and out on the grass field. Chenko, my son still talks about you to this day. The behind the back goal is definitely a true thing because my son still talks about it. And I can't, ima I can't tell you how many times I was like, oh my gosh, no, he did not just do that. And Dom, unbelievable pitcher. Love the way he threw the ball. He's like a Louis Tiant. Anyone here that knows baseball, Louis Tiant was a great pitcher that had a lot of quirky little ways that he throw the ball. And, and Dom really reminded me. And I love Jesse Daywalt was watching like Lenny Dykstra all over again. And I love that we share the same name. And Kelly, again, beautiful family and amazing tennis player. I remember coming down and watching you play on the tennis court. So I feel really honored right now to be here to induct you all into here. And you'll go on in your lives and be called so many different things, Mr., Mrs., and maybe some other names. But the other thing that you can always be called now that not a lot of people can be called is Hall of Famer. So congratulations. I also want to congratulate all the parents and family and friends of the inductees who came this evening. I love seeing all of the former Chestnut Hill Griffins here with their beautiful babies. I love seeing the support. It, was, it reminds me of when you were here and, and watching you all walk around the halls together and, and support each other. And that, that's what it's really all about. And to see everyone here supporting each other is amazing. And again, a testament to the things that Sister Carol has done at this college. Um, your support parents has played such a vital role in everyone's successes so thank you and congratulations and so before we I know it's starting to get a little cool so maybe I'll stay up here for a little longer I'm sorry I'm just kidding I'm just kidding I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. but we do have a couple more to recognize uh, we have two sisters whose unwavering support for our student athletes and athletic program have made a lasting impact here at the college. And first, I want to, in, want to speak about Sister Jean Faustman, who unfortunately wasn't feeling well today, so she couldn't show up. Um, but she is so many things to this college community, including the Associate Professor of French and Spanish, faculty athletic representative, and definitely the number one fan of our Chestnut Hill Griffins. And did you know that Sister, Sister Jean would email each player and coach before and after every game with words of support and encouragement. That's a true story. Um, Griffin athletes always knew they had a fan in Sister Jean, whether they were starting or coming off the bench. She knew their names and cheered for everyone always and always sent emails. Uh, from late, late August to the end of May, rain or shine, Sister Jean could be found at all of our sporting events cheering on her Griffins. She never plays favorites and divides her everlasting love amongst all our students and coaches. You are truly one of a kind, Sister Jean. I think you're watching on the, on the live stream, so great job. And I wasn't even mad at you during COVID when you broke the no spectator rule and showed up. I have pictures to show that there was no one allowed at these games, and Sister Jean was off in the side with her little trench coat watching the game, and then she would just keep on walking, and I love that. And we love you so dearly, Sister Jean. You'll always have a good seat in our bleachers. And thank you for being you, and thank you for loving us as only you could. And unfortunately, she's not here, but the little chair that Joe Sipos' daughter is sitting in over here is going to be saved for Sister Jean at all of our sporting events so she can come and, and sit. And so we, we appreciate you, Sister Jean, and can't wait to see you healthy and back here in the hallways. And last but certainly not least, I have to acknowledge our president for the past 30 years, Sister Carol Jean Vale. Words cannot express what you've meant to the Chestnut Hill College. Thanks to your encouragement, leadership, and insistence, our athletic program has grown exponentially. When Sister Carol began her presidency, we had seven women's sports teams and two staff working part-time in the athletic office. 
Since then, we have gone co-ed, added men's sports. We have moved from Division Three to Division Two, giving us the opportunity to offer athletic scholarships to our students. We became members of the Central Atlantic Collegiate Conference. We built the Jack and Rosemary Murphy Galati 19, class of 60 fitness complex, which rivals that of our peer institutions. And today we have 18 sports teams, including a men's sprint football team and 66 athletics, 16 athletic staff, uh, no, 66 athletic staff, 21 of whom are all full time. Sister Carol, because of your leadership, we have an athletic program that teaches students the importance of teamwork, discipline, respect, commitment, and sportsmanship. sportsmanship. The athletic program and our student athletes contribute to the life and culture of the college, whether playing on the field or cheering on classmates at a game. We know how much you love athletics because you have shown us by your actions. The way you care for this community is unrivaled. It has been an honor to have worked with, with you and for you over the past 19 years. Thank you for allowing me to learn how to lead with compassion and tough love. You have earned this distinction because of your tireless persistence and all that has been achieved in athletics with your leadership and from all of us, thank you. And knowing that football is your true love, please agree to don your very own number 30 jersey at the next football game you attend. And I will ask, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in celebrating Sister Carol Jean Vale with a resounding round of applause. <laughs> told you football was her favorite. Yeah, when I became president, the one thing I really wanted was a football team. And we were women's college, so that was tough. <laughs> and I remember at one point telling the president of Villanova, Father Peter Donahue, that I really wanted a football team. And he said, well, you could have mine. <laughs> and I wasn't sure if the stadium went with that or not. He never gave me the team. <laughs> Nor did I ever get tickets to the Final Four. You know, I mean, there's some things. I mean, your colleagues. You can't even depend on your colleagues. Anyway, thank you for your kind words, Jesse. It has been my privilege and pleasure to serve this college community over these many years. And I am honored to be inducted into the Hall of Fame with players who were here while I was president. And so that's a very special honor. Now I have to make one thing clear about Sister Jean Faustman. I noticed, you know, the years of graduation they put after our names. And they have uh, 73 for Sister Jean and 78 for, for me. Now the Sisters of St. Joseph took long tours of higher education. We didn't graduate in four years. We were lucky if we graduated in 14. Because see, we were out teaching and ministering all this time. So although Sister Jean and I share the same birthday, we were both born November 12th, uh, she's the younger one, not me. So I just want to clarify that out of respect for her that you're not thinking that, that you know, she's older than I am. Some people are, you know, get upset by that. But I want to tell you that I believe one of my greatest accomplishments is the expansion of the athletic program. In a very significant way, it's responsible for the increase in students in the School of Undergraduate Studies. The ability and willingness of our coaches to go the extra mile to recruit athletes to their teams is obvious each fall when we look at the freshman class and see that athletes usually number half the class and many times two thirds of the class. Our athletes are good students with excellent GPAs. They are good citizens participating in service opportunities to assist our dear neighbors. They attend one another's games and they join clubs and serve in organizations. They are an exemplary presence on campus even if they drink beer. 
Uh, by the way, try the pale ale. <laughs> Most important of all, the majority graduate in four years, and I know that's very important to parents. I could not be more proud of our athletes who truly have demonstrated that they understand what a scholar athlete is. So much of the credit goes to our athletic director, Jesse Balsher, whose enthusiasm, care, and respect for each member of the department is obvious. Over the past few years, Jesse has become an outstanding leader, creating a vibrant athletic community not only among our students, but as you know, among their family and friends. His emails to the college community inform us when and where games will be played and how the teams are doing as their seasons progress. He invites us to come out to support the athletes and because of his communications and invitations, the increase in attendance at games is amazing. I think it was very evident this past spring, you saw the picture of Sister Jean sitting by herself at a tennis match. Well, our final tennis match here, when we were playing in the championship, there was no place to sit. The bleachers were filled, the ground was filled, there was no place, but even standing room was gone. And Jesse has encouraged that in many, many ways, and we're grateful for that. You know, sports are so important to a college community. They create a spirit and enthusiasm that is palpable. No other activity generates the same kind of camaraderie and energy. It is the drumbeat of the community, calling people together, getting them to march in step, providing entertainment that consists of overwhelming highs and agonizing lows. But win or lose, athletics holds the potential to teach both athletes and fans invaluable lessons that will sustain them into their futures. Thank you to all who prepared this event. It takes time and thought to organize all of the necessary details, and we are appreciative. Congratulations to Jesse, Dom, Kelly, Lauren, Michael, and Sister Jean on your induction into the Hall of Fame and for the many contributions you made to this college community over the years. Thank you to all the members of the athletic department who are here this evening. Your hard work is appreciated more than you know. I am grateful for the good example you give our students and the endless hours you work to make certain that their experience is of high quality. And Dr. Lynn Artali, and Athletic Director Lynn Tubman, and former Assistant Athletic Director Albert Strobel. It's good to see you here this evening. Thank you for your support. And Dr. Ortelli, we wish you special blessings as you leave our community to become the sixth president of Maria College in Albany. I'm gonna close with a quote that I came across in the Office of Institutional Advancement the other day that I had never seen and that I will never forget. It's by Nelson Mandela, and I think it speaks to all of us, and I think it would be wonderful for all of us to remember it. It is this, quote, I never lose, I either win or learn. End quote. Thank you. Okay. So thank you all for joining us for the 2022 Athletic Hall of Fame. I hope you have a wonderful evening. And I know that's a lot cooler outside than in here. So, but before you go, there are some, there's coffee and some things to eat in the back if you're, if you're willing to brave this heat. Uh, any soup? Um, I can get that for you, Frank. <laughs> and hopefully we will see everyone at some more Chestnut Hill College games. So thanks again for everyone coming out and have a good night.
Can all the Hall of Famers please go to this backdrop for a picture with your, with your um, award? Thank you. Get down. Yeah, Frank, great job. Dude. Thanks for doing this. This is awesome. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks. You're doing a great job, too. Thank you. He's just going to get a picture with all the, um, with the other Hall of Famers. <laughs>